Hey Kyle, what are you up to? I'm checking out this 1938 Super Skyrider communication receiver. Pretty cool, huh? If you haven't been here before, I'm Kyle from Moonbeam Cottage, and this is going to be an episode of What's Kyle Up To? Let's check it out. Hello friends, Kyle here from Moonbeam Cottage. Uh, I want to share with you today a recent find. This is a 1938 uh, Super Sky Rider radio. This is a communications receiver from Holocrafters. What you're looking at here is the top of the line radio from 1938. Uh, this is in excellent condition. This is an unbelievable condition of this receiver. Uh, but what makes this even more rare is the matching speaker is still with it. This is the uh, R12T speaker. It's a 12 inch permanent magnet speaker. Uh, it's just an amazing setup. Uh, the condition is as close to pristine as you can get. This is all original. Uh, this is an S16 slash SX16. It was sold as an S16, but the first owner upgraded it by putting a crystal in it for better reception. This is a 6-band, 11-tube, super heterodyne radio. Uh, it covers all the bands of radio that were available at that time, from amateur, experimental, up to government bands. Um, six bands of shortwave and broadcast. So, as I said earlier, this radio is in excellent condition. Uh, probably the worst cosmetic part of it will be the speaker. This fabric here has deteriorated, uh, and that's simply over time uh, it didn't survive the ages. And there is a little bit of flaking on this wooden front of the speaker. Uh, so, those are minor cosmetic things. This thing is pristine. Uh, it's never seen uh, a recap or a rebuild. Every piece in this radio and speaker is original. So it's pretty amazing. This particular radio has an interesting backstory. I bought it from the original owner's niece. The original owner lived in Portland, Maine in 1938 and uh, with the onset of World War II, Portland, Maine became a critical defense area. It was the fifth uh, busiest port in the nation. Uh, massive war effort going on there. So at that time, uh, around Casco Bay, um, it was a huge fishing operation, but it got taken over by the government during World War II. Uh, so amateur radios were uh, used by the fishermen to find out uh, when the ferries might be going to some of the islands, what areas they were allowed to go into, that kind of thing. The woman said that her uncle would leave the house to an undisclosed location to use this radio. So that might indicate he was part of the actual government uh, listening station in Casco Bay uh, that was trying to detect uh, enemy submarines entering the area. So the last part of the puzzle here, and one that might help me determine whether he was part of the government's listening station or he was just an amateur uh, very interested in the goings-on of Casco Bay at that time, is that he marked this dial with pencil at certain points. Uh, I'm going to try and track down what parts of the world he was listening to and maybe what those stations might have been related to during World War II. And it might tell us whether he was just an amateur or he actually worked for the government. So that'll be fun. If you enjoyed this video and would like to join us on more of our adventures, be sure to hit that subscribe button and 
ring that bell to be notified when new videos come along. Thanks for stopping by Moonbeam Cottage on Martini Cove. Cheers.